everyone, it's Sherry Carroll for simonsysstamp.com and I'm going to show you a couple simple starting techniques that you can do with the gel press. So first I'll show you the gel press. It is a clear mineral oil infused gel and it comes with two acetate sheets, one on each side. And I like to work on a glass surface where I can just go ahead and press that down and then I can remove the second acetate sheet. So what this is used for is mono printing. Some things you can use with the gel press are the impressibles, and these are another gel plate that has an image impressed into it. So you can use it like a stamp. You can also use stencils, and I like to pull out ones that are solid and then ones that are more open in the inside. So a variety of stencils is always good to use. Another thing you can use is your dies to create little paper masks, and for these I've used freezer paper to cut out my roses and leaves. You can also cut out simple shapes. I've used my circle dies and I've cut out little rings and I've made them a little bit wonky so they're all a little bit different. The gel press is used with paints and I'll be using two different ones. So I have my Dina Wakely paints here and those are a heavy body paint and I'm also using my Delusions paints because I have a lot more colors in those and these are a little bit more fluid. Some other tools that you'll need are brayers, and I have a variety that I use for different purposes. For this one, I'll be using my small brayer since I'm using the 5x7 gel press. I also have some cut up printer paper and also some parchment paper, and you can also use tissue paper. There's a couple of ways of adding your paint to your gel press, and here I'm using freezer paper to mix my colors a little bit before I roll it onto the gel press. So I'm just picking up color as I go and I want it to look really mottled so that you can see all the individual colors on the plate. You're going to go with a really light touch with your brayer just to smooth those out slightly. And then you can go ahead and pick up your piece of paper and smooth the back with your hand to pick up all the paint. Off to the left side I have another piece of paper and I'm just rolling my brayer off to get the excess paint off the brayer. And I'm going to go ahead and do my first pull. I have a little bit of paint left on, so I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of parchment over here and rub that in really well, and that will remove most of the paint. And since I have a good amount of paint still on my little palette to the left, I'm going to go ahead and add more, and this time I'm going to blend it in a little bit more and spread out the paint for a lighter layer. The more you work with the gel press, the more you'll get a feel as to how much paint to add each time. But I'm going to go ahead and put my paper down and we'll see how nice and light this impression is. Another way to add your paint is to go directly from the tube right onto the gel press. And with the Dina Wakely paints, it's really easy because these are heavy body, which means they're a little bit thicker. So they're super easy to apply right from the tube. So I've used three colors, and I'm going to make sure my brayer is nice and clean because I'm really changing colors here to a ruby, and then a nice magenta, and then the tangerine. So I'm going back and forth, and I'm blending these back and forth so they spread out. And I'm also lifting my brayer each time I hit that end. So this gives me a really nice, smooth ombre look. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and put my paper down. This is a really great start for any backgrounds, and you can use these for collage or for your art journals. So I'm just going to give that a really good press, and now I have a really fun background. I have a little bit of paint left over, and again, I'm going to use that parchment paper just to see what I can pick up. Sometimes you can pick up a lot of the paint, and sometimes it's just a few remnants. I'm going to go back in with the same colors, and I'm going to do another background. And this time I'll use a stencil. So I'm starting with that ruby, the magenta, and the tangerine a little bit closer together. And again, I'm going to blend that ruby up at the top, and then I'll go in and grab some of that magenta and start moving that in. And then finally the tangerine at the bottom. And for this one, I don't think I'm going to blend it in as well. I'm just going to leave it kind of rough. And I've also cleaned off my brayer a little bit onto some paper and that kind of cleans off some of the paint. So I've put down a stencil and I'm going to choose some bubble wrap and this comes from packaging and I'm just going to touch this to those sides. It gives me a little bit of a distressed look with a few little circles in there. So this will be a really nice start to a background as well. So I'm going to go ahead and press this in. When you're using a stencil, it's really important to kind of burnish around 
that stencil area with your fingers to make sure you push the paper into the gel press so that you can pick up all that color. So I'll go ahead and lift this up and I have a really nice impression of that stencil. And I also have a really great beginning for a second pull and I'm going to use the tissue or the parchment again and go ahead and press that down. This is really fun to either get the positive or the negative of your stencil. And I'll go ahead and flip this over and that is a super fun beginning to a background as well. Next I am going to blend in some color onto my plate. I'm just going to mix around my colors a little bit. Just kind of in a haphazard, uh, I'm not really worrying about what color is where. I, what I want to do though is clean off my brayer in between and then go back onto the plate and kind of pick up some of that paint. And this gives me a really nice distressed look where the, some of the paint is missing now from some of those areas. So it's really fun to kind of experiment with the colors to see what will look good together. So I'm going to pull this off. Ooh, and I really love that as a beginning background for a collage. I'm going to go ahead and put my parchment on here and pick up some of that color that's at the top and start building with those same colors. For this next one, I'm going to start building up color with my paints. And so I have the magenta also a yellow and an orange or a pepper red and I'm going to start adding these in kind of randomly like I've done before. I have a lot of paint on here and I'm just going to go ahead and just start mixing those and you'll see me rub off onto the side of my paper and take off some of that paint as I go. I'm going to be doing stencils on this and what I'm going to be doing with the stencils is really to get the design first. So the first pull is not what I'm looking for and I'm going to use tissue paper um, because these are really small stencils or really small areas in between. So I'm laying two stencils down and then I'm going to use my tissue paper or parchment paper. I'm going to really burnish into those areas. And you can really see it come through once the paint has touched the paper then you can see it on the back. So it makes it really easy. So my first pull is not the design or the artwork that I want. It's just removing that color from in between those stencils. So now I have a background that I can work with. This is what I'm looking for. And you can also use a mask and this one is from the Crafters Workshop and I have put that down. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my paper down and really rub around the whole area and make sure I get around that mask or that flower. So once I'm happy with that then I can go ahead and pull up my sheet and look at my design. So this one is super fun as well. And now I have that little flower area and I'm going to find my old piece here that I've been working on and I'm going to go ahead and add that flower to the top. So now I have some super fun backgrounds that I can go ahead and start playing with for cards or collages and I can clean up my gel press with the baby wipe and it comes back to crystal clear. The next technique I'll be doing is using the impressibles. So I'm going to put down some of my blue or green inks from Dilutions and then also a turquoise from Dina Wakely. So I have the two different inks. One is a little bit heavier, one is a little bit thinner, and so I'm just going to kind of blend these again kind of haphazardly like I have in the past, not getting a perfect background, just kind of modeled. So I kind of really like how that looks. And I'm cleaning off my brayer on the left side. So this is a rose type medallion and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I get the side that has the impression on it and I'm keeping that acetate backing on the back side. So I'll just lay this down onto the press and just lightly pat this to make sure I get the whole impressible onto my gel press. So the idea is I'm going to be removing the paint from the gel press and I have a couple options here. I can go ahead and put my paper right down onto the impressible and pull up that design that now has the paint on it. Just burnishing around with my fingers and it is kind of bumpy so you can just go ahead and get a really nice impression. You could also turn it down the other way and stamp onto your paper. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm going to pull up some of the paint that's on the gel press and this gives me a really nice background, but what's left on my press for the second pull is really beautiful. So for this, I'm going to use the parchment paper or tissue paper and go ahead and press this in. This is giving me an opposite or a negative of that design and it's really beautifully distressed with the light and dark paints. So the next one I want to do is just a really light background. I've added just a small amount of some green paint and this is just a really thin application. I'll be using 
a stencil with this and this is another technique where I'm going to be adding a second layer onto an already pulled uh, piece. So I have a really pretty leaf stencil here also from the crafters workshop and I'll fill in at the top with some of my paper rings that I've created. These were really fun to create so and they're really thin paper so that freezer paper works out really well and I'm putting the shiny side down so it doesn't stick to the paint. So I'm going to go ahead and put down one of my backgrounds that I've already printed and I'm getting a second print on top. And I like to work with colors that go well together. So the blues and greens are what I tend to stick with. So I'm making sure that I'm really pushing right into that leaf stencil. There was a lot of small areas in between those leaves. And so now I have a green print on top of a blue print with those green leaves. And with the second generation, I'll go ahead and put this other background on. And I've noticed with the second generation, you really need to press your paper right in. I'll go ahead and pull this up, and now I have a really pretty background also that can be used for collage or art journaling. For my last print, I'm going to do a really bright ombre. So I'm starting off with some yellow, and then I'll move into orange. And if you notice, I use my palette knife to put the dilutions paints down onto the gel press. It's the easiest way I've found to apply those. You could also use a popsicle stick or a tongue depressor. So this is a really great way just to get a little bit of paint going on. So I have my three colors, and I'm going to go ahead and start spreading this out with my brayer. And I'm going to make sure I really spread each color out thinly and start blending. And once I get to the bottom, since that red is a little bit stronger color, I'm going to go ahead and rub some off. And then I can go back in and do some blending. So once I get those two colors blended, it's looking pretty good. I think the top two colors really blended well. I have some brayer marks on there and I'm fine with that. I do like a little distressed look. So I'm going to go ahead and set my rings down. Once again, I'm using the shiny side down on to the gel press and just placing those just kind of haphazardly on top of that gel press. So now I'm going to go ahead and press down with my first sheet of paper. And I'm going to make sure that I get my fingers in and all around where those rings are. And then I can go ahead and pull off my first sheet, which is really vibrant. And I'm going to go ahead and put down a second piece. And again, I'm going to really press this in since the second piece tends to need a little bit more pressure to pull all that paint off. But I'll go ahead and pull that up and I have a really nice distressed look. So now because I have that shiny side, of that freezer paper on there I have another design that I can go ahead and work with and so I'll go ahead and press this down and now I have the opposite of the rings once I'm done I'll go ahead and pull this up and you can see now I have solid colored rings once I'm done doing all my printing I can go ahead and clean off the gel press with a baby wipe I've been really lucky that nothing stained on this one so it's really nice and clean so I'm going to go through some of my papers and to show you just the different colors that I've gotten just by using a few colored paints and a handful of stencils I've gotten some really vibrant colors a really nice mix of collage type papers and I'll be using these for my cards and my art journal pages I hope you've enjoyed my simple techniques using my gel press and as always thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoy.